the really serious investors, the guys running the the multi-billion dollar hedge funds, uh, they're all selling like crazy. And, and they're selling like crazy because they see what's coming. Welcome to Proven and Probable. I'm Maurice Jackson, and I'm delighted to have you here today. Before we begin today's video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, we thank you for your continued support. And just a reminder, we sell physical precious metals through Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments. We offer physical delivery to your home, precious metal IRAs, and Brinks depository accounts. You can reach me at 855-505-1900. That's 855-505-1900. Or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. That's maurice at milesfranklin.com. Now, before we begin, I want to introduce you to what is arguably the best book on investing and finance, entitled Nobody Knows Anything, written by Bob Moriarty, the founder of 321gold and 321energy.com. You can pick up a copy on our website under the education tab. And again, the book is entitled Nobody Knows Anything. Joining us for a conversation is the legendary Bob Moriarty of 321gold and 321energy.com. Mr. Moriarty, welcome to the show. Thank you. It, it's been a long time. <laughs> well, you said that last time, and uh, it's an honor to have you on the show, sir. How is life treating you? Uh, I'm doing very well. Well, I'm happy to hear that. We have a lot of catching up to do since we last spoke. Uh, you know, the big uh, elephant in the room, if you will, is there's a new sheriff coming to, down, to town. I'm sorry. President Trump is now going into his second term. He doesn't have to worry about re-election. He's got the House. He's got the Senate. So I want to hear your thoughts on what the next four years may look like under the Trump administration, foreign and domestic, beginning with domestic policy and economic strategy. Trump's economic policies during his first term were marked by tax cuts and deregulation. Do you expect similar or different strategies in this new administration? And how might this impact U.S. industries, particularly in the natural resource sector? Uh, Trump spoke a lot about tax cuts and about tariffs and deregulation. I'm 100% in favor of the deregulation. I mean, we've got way too many regulations in the United States. The government's totally out of control, and, and Trump knows that. Some of the things that he's talking about doing, like the tariffs, are like sanctions. They're counterproductive. Uh, it's like wage and price controls. No matter how attractive it seems, it never works. And Trump is going to end up making enemies of countries that we should be cooperating with rather than being enemies. Uh, the tax cuts I would be in favor of, but the problem with tax cuts is you've got to match them and more with spending cuts and, and that's something that didn't exist in its first administration, certainly didn't exist under Biden. And uh, I'd like to see what Elon Musk manages to come up with, because he's certainly anti-regulation. So it's going to be an interesting time. But the overall thing that I would say is the election of Donald Trump is one of those good news, bad news stories. It's the analog, closest analog I can come up with is your mother-in-law drives off a cliff in your brand new Cadillac. So <laughs> and not it's all good. The, the domestic side, he's going to be facing spending out of control, interest rates rising, inflation rising, and a debt that's totally out of control. So he's got some real challenges uh, as a result of a totally disastrous four years under Joe Biden. Uh, this is not going to be a cakewalk uh, for anyone, much less Donald Trump. You know, you referenced tariffs. Can we go back to that? Because as I'm listening to the mainstream media, they are just in favor of the tariffs and uh they are seeing that as the 
the way to make America great again. And I, I view tariffs the same way as you do. But can you break that down for someone who doesn't quite understand the whole picture? Because we always get the upfront picture. How do tariffs work and what's so negative about them on the domestic side for us? Well, that's strange enough. The easy answer to that is to examine the mainstream media. If you want to know what's going on in the world, you need to pay attention to the mainstream media. And everything they say is wrong. 100%. They lie, they cheat, they steal. It is total fiction. Uh, Tariffs do not encourage local production. They penalize uh, ordinary, not investors, but ordinary uh, citizens who want to buy things. Uh, Trump likes to take antagonistic responses to anyone that that he sees as an enemy. And, And that's not the way to get along in business. The way to get along in business is set up circumstances in which everyone benefits. Now, we've spent 20 or 30 years giving away our manufacturing capacity. We need to rebuild that. But the way to rebuild that is to chop the size of government in half. We have way too many regulations. It's too difficult to start a business. The tax structure is unwieldy. So um, we, we need to create a more favorable environment for business. And, and the way to create a more favorable environment is not by burning your neighbor's house down. Well said. What do you think of his new cabinet picks? In particular, you referenced Elon Musk there. Uh, Some of his cabinet picks, I think, are absolutely brilliant. I happen to admire the shit out of Tulsi Gabbard. I think anybody who's really been in the service and actually seen what the service like, she gets wonderful, okay? We... uh, She's going to be the head of DNI, the director of national intelligence, and certainly as a person who is targeted by the deep state, uh, she wants to clean house. I I fully approve of that. Uh, Getz, I I think, is a good answer as attorney general, even though he has a fairly shaky background. But some of his picks, like uh, Huckleberry for the uh, ambassador to Israel and uh, Marco Rubio as Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense, I won't even try to pronounce his name. These people are total disasters. They are going to start World War III. I've been saying this for months. We are right on the edge of World War III in two totally different areas. The Ukrainians lost the war in Ukraine two and a half years ago, and they were prepared to come to the table and stop fighting in March of 2022. And Boris Johnson went in and said, no, 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 you don't want to do that. You want to keep fighting. We'll keep throwing money at you, and you can steal as much as you can get away with. Uh, I believe when all is said and done, we're going to realize that something like a million Ukrainian soldiers have been killed and probably about 75,000 Russian soldiers. Now, anytime you talk about war, you should ask yourself, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. And the answer is the United States stand to gain nothing. The deep state does, okay? Raytheon's going to do well. The defense industries are going to do well. But that's being paid for in the blood of Ukrainian and Russian soldiers. We are not going to win that war. We've lost it. It was a stupid war to start in the first place. It was run by the deep state for the benefit of the deep state, and it's going to destroy the United States. Some of the nutcases that that Trump has, has submitted for office are so dangerous, they're telling the Russians, we're going to allow deep strike into Russia. And Russia has said, you go ahead and do that, and we're going to kick your ass. And I believe absolutely Putin's going to do that, 
And from a legal point of view, he has all the right in the world to do it. You're you're probably the only person who's sophisticated enough to understand this. Do you? Uh, let me. Oh, let don't me, put me, me on the spot. Don't fair. put me on the spot. <laughs> okay. Are you? Let's see. Let me, let me think. I got think. I word this. We have American soldiers in Ukraine today. We have American soldiers dying in Ukraine today. The technical equipment, including up to and including the, the Abrams tank, is so technical and so difficult, it cannot be operated without the support of American soldiers and American contractors. Let's skip over to Israel versus Iran. You and I have talked about this. The Iranian attack on Israel back in April was overwhelmingly successful. The latest Iranian attack on Israel was overwhelmingly successful. Israel's attack on Iran was a dismal failure, and they pulled back as soon as they realized that all these super sophisticated, super expensive F-35s were being tracked. And if they had continued into Iran, it would have rivaled the Marianas Turkey shoot in 1944. We have lost that war. The Houthis have brought Israel's economy to a standstill. Israel has accomplished none of its objectives. What they're doing is genocide. There is no question about it whatsoever. It's genocide and it's evil. Uh, Donald Trump and his uh, deep state contingent, which is Secretary of State, uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, everybody but Tulsi Gabbard, is owned and operated by Israel. Now, I, I, I'm not sure, and I don't really care what you believe from a religious point of view, but do you understand the concept of no man can serve two masters? I do, sir. Okay, th there's no question about it. These people are crazy. They are shit house rat crazy. The candidate for Secretary of Defense wants to bomb Iranian facilities to prevent Tehran from obtaining nuclear weapons. But we've had two intelligence reports going back to George Bush saying that Iran doesn't have a nuclear weapons program. They don't need a nuclear weapons program. If Iran really needed nuclear weapons, weapons Pakistan would give it to them. The idea that we're going to somehow stop a threat is total rubbish. The only nuclear-powered state in the Middle East is Israel. It is illegal for the United States to give foreign aid to any country that doesn't abide by the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Agreement under the Simonton Act. Mm -hmm. Yet that's exactly what we're doing. We're in bed with a terrorist state. We're in bed financing genocide on, on, a, 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 on a level that's just staggering. The Israelis, the IDF, are trying to starve 600,000 people in North Gaza. Now, that's genocide. It's ethnic cleansing. The UN has called it ethnic cleansing. They've called it genocide. It is genocide. Uh, Israel's now engaged in mass murder in, in Lebanon, in Beirut. For what purpose, okay? This is totally insane, and it's the fault of the United States for giving guns to insane megalomaniacs who are religious fanatics. Well, it's hard to even come up with the... <laughs> <laughs> you said a lot there, and what of what you're saying is is very serious. I don't mean to laugh in that regard, but your pedigree as the youngest pilot in the Marines during the Vietnam era, uh, you've got some background on war, and you you're not in favor of war. And I think uh, sometimes when someone's listening to you, if they have a, a pointed view, the opposite of yours, the first reaction is is profanity, and they and they click off, but. You have to be willing to listen to the other side, even if it's difficult and you don't agree with it. And I appreciate you being there and saying at least your view on it. 
because there are some people that are afraid to, to share their views, and that's what we love and hold you, why we hold you in such high regard. <laughs> There's only one Bob Moriarty. <laughs> well, actually, that's not necessarily true. I've, I've got an identical twin. That's right, you do. <laughs> but let me, let me read some things to you for people who think I, I go overboard. Uh, the ambassador to Israel, uh, Mike Huckabee, there is no such thing as a Palestinian. The two-state solution is irrational and unworkable. There's plenty of land in the world for Palestine. Now, this is the same guy who just said there's no Palestinians. Now he's saying there's plenty of land in the world for Palestinians, and presumably outside Palestine. There's no such thing as the West Bank. There's no such thing as the settlement. There's no such thing as an occupation. Now, interestingly enough, and there's no coverage in this in the mainstream media, certainly in the West, the UN came out two months ago and says, we're going to give Israel 30 days to remove the 675,000 illegal occupants, the occupiers of the West Bank, it is illegal, the settlements are illegal, and they have to leave. Now, according to international law and the UN agreement, all the countries in the world are support are supposed to support that declaration. And, of course, you don't hear anything about it in the West because the West, the media is controlled, and there's three guesses as to who controls them. Mm. And if your first guess is the Mormons, you're wrong. <laughs> and if your second guess is the Catholics, you're wrong. And you're going to have to figure out for yourself who controls the media. But it's the same guys who own and operate Washington, D.C. And quite bluntly, they own and operate Donald Trump. And that is a very, very dangerous thing. Now, do you realize, let's see what time it is. It's coming up on noon Eastern. Are you aware that Iran has put a notum out that's effective three and a half hours from now for rocket launches? I am not. And I'm not aware that it's being uh, right now displayed anywhere on, on the uh, mainstream media either. No, well, it. It, it's available, but you got to look for it. Would you like me to read it to you? Absolutely. Okay, bear with me. And as you're doing that, I just wanted you, uh, for someone listening that may not be aware of who that third entity might be, uh, the United States, based off of your statement, there has 51 states. Is that correct? Not 50. And the 51st state is called the deep state? Huh. Uh, <laughs> the deep state owns the 50 states. That's exactly what I was trying to allude to there. Yeah. And Israel owns the deep state. Interesting, the relationships. If you connect yeah. in the dots. Okay. If you go to HalTurnerRadioShow.com, Iran expands NOTAM to four additional zones. And then question mark, retaliation against Israel. Iran has expanded its notice to airmen missions from the central Iran region to now include four other regions. This could be the coming Iranian response to an Israeli attack from two weeks ago. Okay, the NOTAM issued very early this past week isolated a section of central Iran from all civilian aircraft due to what the NOTAM said would be rocket launches. That is some uh, breaking news there because again many of us are not aware of that here in the united states and uh, the control of the media in the deep state is troubling to many of us do you foresee so you don't foresee that changing with the new trump administration do you because again they are on the right and the mainstream media as we tend to see it or view it is, is that is controlled by the left and so do you well here's here's the deal uh, it is going to change under the new administration. It's going to change dramatically. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Okay. Chuck Schumer, if you go to Information Liberation, Chuck Schumer, Schumer moves to silence criticism of Israel as hate speech with Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. Now then, is it okay to criticize the Pope? I believe it is. 
Okay, is it okay to criticize Mormons? I believe it is. Can you criticize Muslims? I believe you can. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Can you criticize Japan? I believe you can. Okay, now we could go on for an hour, and I could list all of the people that you're allowed to criticize, but I could save a lot of time. What's the one entity you are not allowed to criticize? Israel. Oh, thank you. You're an anti-Semite. <laughs> well, I'm not that, but <laughs> again, you're making some some valid points here because you should be able to express your views. I'm a uh, I'm proud to share. I'm a libertarian, and I'm, I'm I love my Second Amendment. And uh, being able to to share your views is an important part of the, being a citizen of the United States. And so, I am not in agreement with Mr. Schumer. Well, the scary thing is. In 32 states, if you accept a government position or if you accept a contract from the state government, 32 states, you have to take an oath of office to Israel. You are not allowed to support BDS, which is the the Jewish uh, boycott group that wants to boycott Israel until they start obeying the law. Yeah, I'd be curious... would you, be able, well, would you be able to send me that link, the oath that you're referring to, and we can include that in the description box after this interview so people can just see it? Because, again, proof is in the pudding when you can actually look it up and see it for yourself versus myself or Mr. Moriarty just sharing it here online. Yeah, but here's the deal. There isn't an oath of office per se. It's the effect ah. that it's the oath of office. If you support BDS... In 32 states, you will not get a job, and you will not get a government contract. Now, the bizarre thing is there is nothing in world history. You, you've got this tiny, shit-for-brains, little 9 million people country that is wagging the dog, and that's the United States. And they own and operate Donald Trump. Okay, don't think for a minute that I'm in favor of Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris was a brain-dead idiot who slept her way into office. I was not a fan. However, and and some of Trump's uh, ideas, I mean, securing the border, if the guy who's going to be the secretary, God, I can't even think, is he secretary of DHS? Who's the guy in charge? I know you're referring to, he's the... um or for Trump, that is the correct. Your friend who, who yeah, yeah, I know the gentleman's uh, name. I'm, I'm, I see his face right now. He's a stout gentleman. Um, yeah, I know who you're referring to. I think we all know who you're referring to. Just can't think of his name right now. Yeah, well, I, I would marry him if he was a woman. Okay, I, I, I just totally agree. I mean, he got up in front of Congress. He was testifying in front of Congress, and the chairwoman started giving him some crap. And, and she told him essentially to shut up. And he said, "Lady, you need to understand something. I'm a taxpayer. Oh yeah, I, remember I don't that work one. for you. You <laughs> work for me." And I thought, "Damn, you know, I married this guy." <laughs> I think he was uh, corresponding that moment with AOC, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was pretty uh, contentious. Now, there. It, 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 he he's taken AOC on, but it was the chairman of the committee. That was giving him a hard time, and she kept banging the, the gavel that she was going to give him a hard time. And he essentially said, pound sand, lady. <laughs> well, just for the record, because you reference Harris, you reference Trump. So for global stability, which option would have been better for the United States? Harris? Suicide. 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 Uh, I mean, uh, here, here's what's crazy. We have, have burned... The Constitution to shreds. Uh, the amazing thing is, they couldn't find enough dead people to get Harris into office, which really amazing. The United States got a lot of dead people. Uh, there's no question <laughs> there was so much fraud in this election. They still couldn't elect her. She's the only person who is more despised than Hillary Clinton, and everybody hated Hillary Clinton. So uh, we've got this interesting situation where some of the things, I love the idea of Robert F. Kennedy 
being in charge of health and human services. I mean, that's absolutely great. We need to take Fauci and Bill Gates and all those criminals, and they were criminals. You and I have been talking about that crap for years. 100% of what I said about the C word yes. was don't, true. Don't, don't, okay. let, let me go back to that, if I may, and I'm, I'm chuckling here. So the C word that you're referring to, and please don't say it, I can just attest to this. There is a a media service, and I'm going to. They begin with the letter Y. Basically, we're going to ban me for six months because of our interviews, where you had referenced the solution and the problem to the C word, and they were saying, sharing with me that I was uh, giving out. Uh, medical information that was incorrect, and they were also going to, again, for six months, stop me from producing any more content on that media platform. And uh, my my heart just told me, no, I'm going to keep interviewing you, and I'm not going to go away from the subject matter. But they would, if you look now at our, our previous interviews, they have been blocked, many of them, which is discouraging to because, me. Because... Yes, I, I use the C word. Yes, you use the C you word. You don't use the C word. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, the C word and the I word. Yes, but the the proof is in the pudding. When you listen to the Mr. Moriarty speak, it's very contentious. I get it, and that's why he's here. I wouldn't want to have really almost any. You're the you're the top of the food chart there for me, sir. When it comes to uh, reliability, when it comes to just being honest. You're you're the source for me when I when I want to hear something refreshing, and I think for many of us. But you're so spot on with the media, and it it really, from my standpoint, frustrates me because when you're putting out truth, the truth should be shared, and it should not be blocked. And and we, you and I, because we're alternative media, if you will. And actually, let me pause there for one second. I am not aware of this, but do you have any social media uh, accounts? I don't believe you do. Nope. Nope. And, and you have well over a million followers. That is amazing because you've done it organically, if you will. You know, you're not actually... Cre- well, th- yeah, go ahead, sir. I, I did it organically because I didn't want to give those idiots uh, control over me. I, and uh, le- let me give you a perfect example of disinformation. Uh, when, when you go to the store and buy milk, what, what size container do you buy? A gallon, typically. Okay, in, in a plastic jug? Yes. I, Do you I ever buy a half gallon? Well, I don't purchase milk, just for the record, but I'm going to share. I, I believe there is some type of half milk container. Is there, is there not? I don't purchase milk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Those, Forgive but me. I they're, don't... Not, they're not plastic containers. They're milk cartons. Okay. You don't have a gallon milk carton because it's too damn big. So you have plastic if you buy a gallon. But if you buy a half gallon or a quart, it comes in a milk carton. And they have used milk cartons in the past to put the information out in front of everybody. Yes. And Hillary Clinton came out the last couple of months and she said that people who are guilty of disinformation and misinformation should be charged criminally. (laughs) And if there was any person in the universe whose face should be on the side of every milk carton in the world, (laughs) it would be Hillary Clinton, who is in charge of the Russian disinformation and the 51 intelligence agents who said, oh, yeah, it had a Hunter Biden laptop that had all the aspects of of a Russian uh, disinformation. Hillary Clinton is the biggest disinformation artist in world history, and she's saying people should go to jail for disinformation. Well, I fully support her. I think she ought to go to jail. (laughs) I think many of us are in favor of that. And let's not forget Benghazi as well. Uh, Sticking with Uh, Trump. That's very close to home for me. Because I, I was in the military, and I was in heavy combat, and uh, what she did at Benghazi was evil. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to switch gears here slightly. With still sticky with Trump, though, do you think his relationship with the Federal Reserve will continue to have any notable effects, if any, on the precious metal markets, but particularly in terms of interest rates and monetary policy? 
Uh, here's what I think's going to happen, and it's just my opinion, and I'm wrong on a real regular basis. And, of course, when a person is wrong on a regular basis, you know they're honest. If a person <laughs> is dishonest, he claims that he was always correct, and I'm not always correct. I, I don't think the Federal Reserve and interest rates have anything to do with the near-term future of the U.S. economy. I, I think that uh, Donald Trump just signed up to be captain on board the Titanic. The uh, stock market is at a record high, 75-year high in, in terms it inflation's totally out of control. We're up to $36 trillion in debt. And it would be so easy for some tiny butterfly in Mexico to cause a hurricane financially in the United States. When you see, well, uh, I, I've got a friend. Uh, let me think of what the XRP, I, I think it's a Bitcoin, one of the Bitcoins. She owned XRP, and she asked me what she should do. And I said, get out of that piece of crap. Well, luckily for her, she didn't do that, okay? It was up 67% last week. Now, nothing credible in the entire financial world goes up 67% in a week. But uh, Bitcoin, all of the Bitcoins have just skyrocketed since the election, and frankly, I, I don't see any reason for it. So I, I think we are on eggshells at a very dangerous time geopolitically with World War III. The only question about World War III is, do we start it in Ukraine or do we start it in Gaza? You know, speaking of those cryptocurrencies, it seems that you have fear and greed and more of the greed is taking over on that side, whereas on the physical precious metals, they've kind of cooled down here a little bit. So let's let's talk about physical precious metals. Um, just in your opinion, how does the Trump administration impact the price and demand for precious metals? And are we likely to see a growth in precious metals as a safe haven? Uh, that's that's two totally different questions. OK. Let me read something to you, written on November 5th. After months of new record high prices for gold day after day, the market woke up to reality last week when Newmont reported poor results. We have started a correction in my view. It's that time of year when investors start thinking about dumping their losers into tax loss silly season running from now until just before Christmas. I think the process could run into January, but we needed a correction, and we seem to have it. Now, if that was written on November 5th, what did the Trump election have to do with the price of gold? Absolutely nothing. Who wrote that? I would say the legendary Bob Moriarty. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> you weren't expecting that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> the reason I referenced my question that way, and I knew the answer, is we tend to think that there is a co direct correlation with that, and there isn't, as you referenced. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, too, too many people want to believe stock market up, gold down, interest rates up, gold up. That's all nonsense. Uh, the only thing that moves any market... It's sentiment. The sentiment for gold and silver got too high. The sentiment for Bitcoin and the stock market and Nevada is it, sky high. And somebody's going to pay a price for that. If you follow sentiment through the daily sentiment indicator, it's the most valuable uh, trading information I've ever seen. It is signal, not noise. 95% of what you hear is noise, not signal. Uh, the DSI, any measure of sentiment is signal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of this interview, I referenced a book, Nobody Knows Anything. And if you want to know what Mr. Moriarty is referring to right now with the DSI, it is contained in that book. Uh, Bob, also, you know, I referenced your book here earlier before the interview. Where, is there something else you can share with us why someone should purchase this book? Because it's a must-have. I don't care what time of the year it is, what year it is. I don't care where the metal prices are. 
the book will resonate with anyone. Give us some of your feedback on the book, if you would, please. Well, there's two kinds of people who are natural buyers of the book. The first kind of people are people who think I'm an idiot, and they should buy the book to verify whether I'm an idiot or not. And the second group of people are the people who think I'm not an idiot, and they should buy the book because it'll reinforce what they believe. That's a book that is so classic, it's going to be in print 50 years from now because it talks about basic human behavior that never changes. Uh, I, I went to Southern Methodist. Let me think how far back this is. I went to Southern Methodist in 1972, and we had a required course. We studied uh, extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds mm -hmm. for an entire semester. Okay, And extraordinary popular delusions is considered the classic, all-time classic book on human behavior and finance. It's a poorly written book. It was written 170 years ago. Uh, you have to work at it to actually make it through the book, but it tells story after story after story after story of mass psychology gone wrong. We're going to look back at climate change. We're going to look back at the CO2 nonsense, and we're going to look back at green energy and say, how could those people have been that stupid? And the answer is men have always been stupid. We're just doing the same thing today. Have you considered changing or adding, revising the cover of the book and adding a wine bottle on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, you want the good news or the bad news? Give them, okay? give, give them both. <laughs> the bad news is in 2023, we had so much rain in the south of France, the white wine crop was literally wiped out. And my my if if I had harvested my grapes by hand, I couldn't have made an entire bottle of wine. That's the bad news. But okay. 2024, we had a good crop this year. All right. And uh we we did harvest and I'm gonna have about uh two hundred bottles of Chateau Fax. Well, now, you may not realize why I reference that. The reason I reference that is because the book and all of your books get better with time, just like wine. That's why I reference that. No, that's a really good point. Wine, women, and, and, and books should get better with time. <laughs> well, then have I, 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 Let me give you one better. Okay? okay, I'll tell you something you haven't done that you need to do today. I'm going to do it. You have my word. Okay, go to Amazon. And buy Crapshoot, okay? Crap That's shoot. a book I wrote, God, 20 years ago. And I was testing fiction, see if I could read fiction. And it's not in print. It's only in electronic format. But it's something you can read in two hours. Now, what I do, you know, when you get old, your memory starts to go. And somebody talked to me and brought something up about playing poker a woman playing poker and i thought damn i wrote a book about that once but crapshoot is the story of a young 20 year old fighter pilot who falls in love with the woman who's a poker player and there's a lot of sex involved and a lot of fun stuff but it's a i, I was reading the book on, on kindle i thought damn I like to read some more. This guy's crap. He's really a good writer. And and I realized I was the guy who wrote the book. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. Everyone, you know, as a uh, reminder for everyone, I do sell physical precious metals. But, Bob, you may not be aware of this. One of the first questions I frequently receive is this. Maurice, what is Bob buying right now before they make their purchase? Ah, ah. <laughs> so what'd you we share know, with us? We know. What are you we buying know right what the now and why? That is. Well, it's silver. You're buying silver. And why? It has a shifted from uh silver from platinum, I should say, to silver. Have you ever used a pressure cooker? I have not. I do not do any cooking. I don't do any grocery shopping. That's why I couldn't answer the question on milk. <laughs> really? No, I uh I you how, don't want you don't how, eat in the how kitchen. Do, how, how do you eat? I have an amazing okay, wife. Do you, know, do you know how a pressure cooker works? 
Sir, I don't. I, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, I don't. Okay. You, you, you've got a pot, and it's got a lid, and the lid literally screws on, and you've got water in the stuff that you try to cook. This is how they make KFC with the pressure cooker. And the old-fashioned pressure cookers had a little thing on the very top, and as the pressure built up inside the pan, that was a relief valve. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have a pressure cooker and it's boiling and it's producing steam and it's a sealed container and you take the relief valve off, what's going to happen next? Well, there's got to be some kind of tension or tension uh, energy being released. Am I not in the right direction there? Uh, it's called an explosion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and... and you know, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, literally, I mean, they've changed how pressure cookers work because, you know, in the 40s, 50s, pressure cookers used to blow up all the time, the big, thick aluminum pans. Uh, I, I think silver, we we had $2,800 gold. That's the highest gold's ever been. The highest silver's ever been was on January 21st of uh, 1980. It got to $50.25. And then in late April of 2011, it almost touched 50, but it didn't quite make it to 50. And it's at 30 or 31 now. So we've got a record high for gold that it's 11 times higher than it was 24 years ago. Yet, silver is only four or five times higher. Uh, the pressure is building up, and one of these days, it's going to blow. And buying silver uh, today is it, going to be something good. Now, I'm going to show you something you don't know about me. Be patient. Yeah, what are you working on there, Bob? Okay. Can you see this? Yes, sir. If you hold it still for a second, because the uh, image is trying to capture... There we go. Yes, sir. That's a silver necklace see these yes sir okay these these are silver earrings now uh, take a wild stab who's got a jewelry bench in its bedroom <laughs> that will be you there and uh and i can attest to what you've you've made some uh, jewelry artifacts for me and i love i'm wearing them as we speak literally as we speak i have three beautiful belt buckles because of you yeah yeah well uh i i had I was going to help someone w with some jewelry equipment, and uh, I, I thought about it and thought, damn, you know, I haven't got a girlfriend. Nobody's going to scream at me for making jewelry at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I, I, I'm back making jewelry. Are you? But I'm doing it in silver because, frankly, Maurice, I can't afford you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I – so – the artifacts that you're making right now, Let, can, yeah. we, can we see them one more time? I did not know you were, you were making these. You didn't even share that with me in our private conversations. Are those available on your website, or how does even if somebody's interested in purchasing one, how do they get how do they get hold of you? They can't afford it. Can't afford can't it. Can't afford it. No, <laughs> they got they got to be friends of mine. I don't sell anything. I give it away. Well, I'm honored that I have three of your. You know, personal artifacts, they're, they're beautiful. I get compliments on how them many, all the time. How much, how much should I charge you for the belt buckles? Uh, I'll stick with the price you gave, gave a minute ago. Just, I'm your friend, so there's no cost involved. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I, I, it would take the pleasure away from me if I profited off of you or anyone else so so i make jewelry but i make jewelry for friends and and both of them appreciate it very noble may i ask you this in reference to silver is there a particular bar or coin that you're purchasing right now i'll tell you in a minute um i have a relationship with a silver storage place and they call me up when people want to sell things and they make me a good price because they're interested in turnover okay uh they have to sell 
because uh, you're in the business. Uh, you guys actually keep inventory. They don't keep inventory. So when somebody says, hey, I need to sell a thousand ounce silver, they need to go find a buyer. And every single time in the last 10 years, they called me up and, and offered the silver to me cheap. Every single time, mark to bottom. Refer- uh, you, you just... I- Glad you brought that up. If you recall, you referenced 1980, the high for silver. You referenced 2011. Let's go back to 2011. You okay. were the one that said, pause, it's not going higher, and you got a lot of flack. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a contrarian, so if a thousand people tell me how stupid I am, it means I'm not stupid. <laughs> now, that is in writing, but again, you were able to determine that because of the DSI, I think it is one indicator. And again, I want to reference the book because it's paramount. How was Bob Moriarty able to accurately predict that that the silver price was not going to exceed a new high? A lot of flack. And when you're in this space, as you referenced uh, in your book, you, the, the nuttiest investors, if you will, and I'm saying this in, this in a kind way, are silver investors. They are really, or speculators, they are ex- very exuberant they are they're very um i think i wouldn't say they're more on the fear side i think they're more on the greed side and if you say anything no 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 no. they're they're shit house rap crazy (laughs) okay (laughs) it's just being too kind but you took a lot of flack for that and once it was determined that you were correct how many of them came back and said hey on this one you were right bob well i i got four five hundred or six hundred emails telling me how stupid I was for saying we were at the top. The daily sentiment in on January 21st, 1980, and that was the day of the high, was 95. On April 25th or April 26th of 2011, it was 96. People were, were more buoyant in 2011 than they were in 1980, even though 31 years had passed, and in relative terms, uh, gold or silver would have had to gone to a hundred bucks an ounce to be equivalent to what it was in January of 1980. So the daily sentiment indicator nailed that right to the top, and all I did was say so. But I I respond to every email. And when somebody tells me how stupid I am and I called it top and it couldn't possibly a top, silver is going to the moon, I, I would write them and say, okay, well, I've got an opinion. And what you really should do is you should contact me a month or two from now and tell me how stupid I am. Yeah, <laughs> and they don't do that. <clears throat> well, actually, I don't know. No, Nobody's ever done that. <laughs> I do want to get some clarification. Okay, so we understand that you have a relationship uh, with a a, bro- a, <clears throat> a a silver company or storage facility, if you will. Right. But right. what what are you saying to the person listening? Should they get 10-ounce bars? Should they get junk silver, 1-ounce coins, well, kilo uh, bars? It, 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 it depends on the financial situation of the person. I, I like silver. I was buying silver when it was four dollars an ounce. I I I I've got like twenty sets of sterling silver flatware sitting in Miami that I paid under ten dollars an ounce for. <laughs> and and the theory was, I mean, I, I don't think I really need twenty sets, but it was so cheap I thought, well, you know, silver's probably gonna go up someday. Uh so I bought them. And, and, you know, I'll hold it until silver goes up. But if you're rich, buy 1,000-ounce bars. If you're not rich and, and you want to be able to buy gas, buy junk silver coins. I think junk silver coins used to sell at a 15 or 20% discount. Now, you know a lot more about it than I do now. I think it probably sells for a premium now. But quarters and a half dollars, silver dollars, are, are going to be very tradable. And one of these days, the, the fraud that is the Western debt-based financial system, one of these days, it's like a pressure cooker. It's going to blow sky high. 
and several dollars could be real valuable. That's the, the problem with uh, gold, and I like gold, a, a British sovereign costs about 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a quarter ounce of gold. And, and you know this, okay, because uh, uh, you own some gold and you own some gold jewelry. I used to make a lot of gold jewelry. You know, I don't. Why I don't buy? Why I don't make gold jewelry anymore? And why is that, sir? I can't afford it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, well, Barbara well, and I were buying. Barbara and I were buying <clears throat> gold at two sixty, two seventy, two eighty an ounce. So it, it didn't bother me to make a gold change for everybody in my family. But you know, I don't. I don't love my family that much anymore. <laughs> well. I want to answer a question you referenced, or not a, a statement you made in reference to junk silver. We at Miles Franklin are selling junk silver at two bucks and eighty-five cents over spot right now. And the hottest thing going for us in reference to junk silver, and I'm a buyer of them, are the mercury dimes in near three, three ten over spot. Uh, if I recall back during the banking crisis when we spoke a year and a half ago, you were looking at junk silver being fourteen to eighteen bucks over the spot price, and everyone wanted them. Right now two to three bucks over spot there the 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 yeah, september october buying picked up but all of this year they've been basically right at that price point 285 to 310 and there hasn't been that much buying so again i can read the market that way uh of the sentiment in that regard by actual buyers what is the psychology there and the psychology as you referenced many times as you've taught me when it's high everybody wants it and when it's low and it makes sense <laughs> nobody wants it <laughs> Well, it's funny you talk about mercury dimes. I was buying, uh, there was a coin store that I went into in Miami. I used to go in there every Saturday, and I would sit down and talk to the guy who ran the place. He was a good friend of mine. And I was buying junk silver. Someone would come in with junk silver, and John would pay them 80% of spot. And he would turn it around and sell it to me for 90% of spot. Now, if I had taken it down the street to a smelter, I could have gotten spot. And, of course, John could have done the same thing, but he just wanted the turnover. Okay, if he paid somebody a 1000 bucks and I come in and give him 1100 he makes 100 bucks profit, and he was thrilled to do that. I, I had... <laughs> I'll tell you, I had fifty thousand dollars in in mercury dives. Well, if you uh, ever want to sell them, I'll give you. Well, you know my phone number. <laughs> no, I, I sold them all in the two thousand eleven. I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> Well, one thing about sentiment in reference to the uh, junk silver, it correlates as well with the sentiment as I referenced because when silver demand is low, the premiums for silver, of course, are low, but in particular on junk silver. And when the sentiment is high, they're equal to silver eagles. And so I share with my clients up front, hey, I know you're, you're probably going to want silver eagles, especially if you're a new client. But to me, the best proposition would be the junk silver because... They cost less, and that's that's the objective is for me to look out for your best, um, for look out for your best interests. And the junk silver right now, absolutely, I'm a buyer of the mercury dimes. But I do want to get to my favorite metal, which is platinum, and I also want to get into some palladium. So, any thoughts on those two metals? Well, uh, strange enough, platinum used to be thousand bucks an ounce, and palladium was four hundred and ten bucks an ounce. Uh, platinum shot up to over two thousand dollars an ounce. And it, it's come back. I think it's 900 and change right now. Platinum is very cheap. But the problem with platinum is it's not as liquid a market. Uh, rhodium, okay, you remember when rhodium oh, yes. was seven or 800 bucks an ounce, and I was pounding the table about rhodium. Rhodium went for seven or 800 bucks an ounce to 28,000. And that's the kind of move, uh, maybe not that high, but that's the kind of move that I see at Silver. When uh, everybody gets... Uh, well, I just want to cause, pa pause you there. Did you did you mean platinum or silver, the move there from that rhodium made? You, you referenced... Silver. So, okay. Okay, silver. yeah, silver. Uh, I, I think platinum is going to go back to its historic premium 
over gold, so platinum could go to three thousand or four thousand dollars an ounce. But I, I think the rocket ship, and w- you and I had this conversation a half a dozen times about rhodium, mm-hmm. and everybody was convinced I was crazy. You can't even buy rhodium coins now. You can't put your hands on them. I asked you for some here a week or two ago. That's correct. But uh, rhodium, rhodium went from seven or eight hundred bucks an ounce to twenty eight thousand. Okay, but it's such an illiquid market that it's like four thousand dollars bid and five thousand dollars ask, and you know, twenty five percent premium is ridiculous. If you track the Sprott Silver ETF. It will show you sentiment for silver, and the sentiment for silver right now is very low, which is a good thing. It is. is, You want to buy when nobody wants to buy things. Now, what about palladium? You you touched on it briefly there. Are you a buyer of palladium? No. Not a buyer of palladium? No. Uh, Platinum is a better catalytic metal than palladium. Palladium ran up to two or three thousand dollars an ounce, and and frankly, it it's not as useful a metal as as platinum was. But they ran the price, and I I think uh, palladium is a little higher than platinum right now. It is. I I have one one ounce bar. I'll, I'll give somebody a good price on. All right. Well, let's move on to resource stocks. How do you foresee resource stocks, particularly in mining and energy, reacting to the Trump administration's regulatory stance? And do you expect more favorable conditions for exploration and development? Uh, The answer to the part two of that question is absolutely. Uh, The United States... uh, I'm going to use the term deep state, but I really segregate deep state to be the military industrial complex. But the deep state is the unelected bureaucrats who really run the government. And the unelected bureaucrats have gotten totally out of control, especially in mining. And somebody needs to drag them back into the real world. I I do believe that Trump will make things a lot more favorable for mining in the United States, and I see that as a good thing. Let's talk about resource nationalism. With geopolitical tensions rising, do you think we'll see more instances of resource nationalism where countries impose stricter controls on natural resources? And how might this affect the profitability of resource stocks and the global supply chain? And I'm thinking of BRICS here as well. The BRICS nations. Yeah. Uh, the strange thing is, uh, that's really three questions. You said it is, two yes. questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, the answer to the first question is absolutely yes. The answer to the second question is when countries like Mexico start getting stupid, uh, they hurt all of the companies in the country. And then eventually they wake up and people start coming back into the industry. Uh, The resource area has been an utter disaster literally since 1965. And in relative terms of resource stocks compared to the metals, uh, it's just about the lowest it's ever been. But as a contrarian, I look at that as a good thing. I I do believe we're going to have, we're in a correction. I mean, we're clearly in a correction. And my call of November 5th was absolutely accurate. And that could go through uh, anywhere from December 20th to January 15th. I think we're going to see some scary times between now and, and when Donald Trump is is uh, sworn in, brought in, sworn into office, because the the deep state either owns him or is terrified of him, and I'm not sure which one is true. If they own him, we'll be able to make it through. If we don't start World War Three, and there's a really big chance of that happening, and. Uh, if the deep state hates Trump, which I don't think they do, they'll kill him. Well, there's two assassination attempts already. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, no. Expand. Go ahead. That's why we have you here, sir. There were three. All right. 
A guy showed up, okay, armed with fake credentials, and he supposedly was buddy-buddy with all the honchos in the Trump campaign. Now, he could be armed, mm-hmm. okay, and that's okay, but if it wasn't a assassination attempt in, in progress, why did he have fake credentials? Yeah, the fake you credentials. You don't have fake credentials. I don't have fake credentials. Yes. The only people who have fake credentials are people who want to do bad things. So I think there were three attempts, one of which uh, aborted quite early. Well, again, that goes to my point, though. I think they hate him. <laughs> if you had three. Well, let me, let me tell you. I'll, I'll tell you something about that first attempt. If, if, Trump had not turned his head exactly when he did. His brains would have been splattered all over the podium. Yes. That bullet missed him by seconds. Yes. Yeah. And I I give credit. You know, I, I make no bones about it. I don't like Donald Trump. But Donald Trump reacted to that. I mean, the Secret Service was peeing all over themselves. They had women running around, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. There was some fat little toad, okay, who couldn't (laughs) fit her gun in her holster. And I was thinking, oh, Jesus, who hired her? I wonder if that's a DEI. I was just about to say it. (laughs) I was just about to say it. (laughs) <laughs> well, let's go back to research. Well, come oh, on, give me, give me an answer. No, 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 no. no give me an answer. That what? is the answer. No the, shit? Yeah, that's DEI all the way, in my opinion. <laughs> 100%. I don't want to make fun of somebody's uh, body composition, but uh, in, a, in a line of work like that, I would think you'd want to be uh, fit, mobile, and that doesn't meet the criteria. And, of course, your well, skill sets, me, your skill sets me, seem to be good as well. No, no, no. Stop for a minute. You ever seen a skinny toad? I have not. All toads are fat little toads. <laughs> you're wrong. You're you're so wrong for saying that. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go straight to hell when I die too. <laughs> well, let's go back to resource stocks here now. For investors looking at resource stocks under the Trump administration, what sectors will benefit here? Precious metals, energy, uh, or strange base metals? Enough, e- energy. Absolutely slam dunk. Uh, the, the whole green energy thing, the the wind turbines, the solar, the electric vehicles, 100% fraud. 100% fraud. But okay. the question was, will they benefit? Who's going to be, should Where should we go? Everybody. No, should we go into to, to base metals? Should we go into precious metals? If you're looking no, at no, resource no. stocks. We, we, were talk, we were talking about energy. And energy is absolutely going to be the place to be because we have an administration. Joe Biden was the biggest dumbass in, in the known universe for his, his bullshit on on the energy. He was going to cease uh, drilling for oil in the United States. He was going to kill uh, the energy business. If you look at oil production going back to about 1863 or 1865, when oil production really started in the United States, the explosion of population and the explosion in energy production in the form of of carbon-based energy, the charts are identical. So if you want to cut uh, carbon-based energy in half, it implies you have to cut population in half. And and frankly, I'm dead set against that. I, I think energy is going to be the standout. I think uranium is, is still a slam dunk. But uh, what's going to happen, and Trump is facing some very real economic problems in the stock market, in, in Bitcoin, uh, where... It, it, it's it's gone totally out of control, and I see them correcting and more. The really serious investors, the guys running the the multi billion dollar hedge funds, uh, they're all selling like crazy, and, and they're selling like crazy because they see what's coming. Now, whether it's next week or next month or six months from now, I don't know that. 
but uh, when the biggest, most successful investor in the world has been unloading Bank of America and Apple stock for the last year, he's trying to tell you something. Now, did I tell you about Jeff Bezos, his 417-foot yacht? No, sir. We, didn't, we haven't touched okay. on that before. If you're rich and you need to buy the biggest sailing vessel in the world, do you know what that means? I'm not drawing a connection at all. What does that mean? It, uh... it means you got a dick that's about <laughs> that long. <laughs> how, do, how do you even come back with something like that? <laughs> all right. <laughs> am, am, am I right? Am I right? Uh, I, I'm not going to disagree. I'll, I'll stay neutral as I can. <laughs> You have no sense of humor. I do have a sense of humor. I'm laughing. <laughs> I think a lot of other yeah, people are. It's, yeah, if, if you're, it's if you're, me that has a sense of humor. <laughs> if you're um, listening and not watching, and uh, what Mr. Moriarty just did was he gave a uh, what was it two two to three inch uh, span? Is that what it is? <laughs> no, 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 no more than two inches. Okay. Any male would know what that means. <laughs> yep. Okay. Any female would know what that means, yeah, that, too. That as well. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get back on track here. There are three companies. Uh, we were having an interesting conversation. Well, I mean, we I'd, were... I'd like to expand on that. <laughs> well, the boat doesn't help directly with that, uh, with that uh, impingement he has, but... It does attract probably more women, I would say, in that regard, yes. So it's, uh, I'll leave it, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> oh, you're boring. <laughs> All right, I can't stop laughing here. Let's talk about three companies that have your attention. Let's find out why. Beginning in Alaska, let's begin with Silver 47, which just went uh, public here this week. Well, uh, that is really, really, really interesting story and that's a story that i've followed for probably close to eight or ten years there was an australian company called white rock and they had a couple of minor projects in australia and they had a giant vms deposit about 60 miles south of fairbanks and everything was going along just fine until the flu <laughs> and they did not schedule a drill crew for 2020. By the time they woke up to the fact that, that people were going to sell their stock off, they didn't have any news, it was too late. You couldn't hire a drill crew. Uh, based on the values for silver, lead, zinc, copper, gold from uh, 2020, I, I think I worked it out. It was it had an in the ground value of something like four point eight or five billion dollars. Well, the idiots running the company, and I don't want to beat around the bush. The people running that company were brain dead idiots. They took all their money back to Australia, and they poured it into the ground in Australia, and two separate government agencies increased their required bond about a thousand percent. I, oh. I mean, it was like the government in Australia shot these guys in the head and killed the company. But I knew that this project called Red Mountain south of Fairbanks was an extraordinary project, very high grade, very big VMS, the potential for growing five to ten times as much metal in the ground, that that was going to be the sweet spot. And I had invested some money in a company called Silver 47 that had an extraordinary silver project in the Yukon. And the government in the Yukon got stupid, and they, they were trying to file for a, a drill permit. They had actually been drilling in 2020 very successfully, and the government in the Yukon uh, stopped it in its tracks by refusing to give them a drill permit. So they were stuck, and it was a private company, so they, they were dead in the water. 
And Quentin Henney and I talked to management there and said, hey, you need to take a look at this project over in Alaska because somebody's going to steal that project. And they went in and they bought Red Mountain for $6 million. Now, when White Rock owned it, I think they probably had a market cap of about $50 million. So uh, Silver 47 bought uh, Red Mountain. They bought $50 million worth of market cap for about $6 million. And they came out and they went public last week. Well, here's what's beautiful about it. The company they bought the project for unloaded shares like crazy in the last week. So they created this incredible opportunity. It's a known resource. It's a 43101 resource. Quentin Hennig's probably the best geologist in the world. He knows the project well. It has easy five to tenfold expansion potential, and the shares are on, on sale right now because this company that got six million mm-hmm. in shares is dumping shares. So I, I think there is a very short term window that you can buy silver forty seven at the discount table. Yeah, the ticker symbol is Alpha George Alpha. That's A G A. We shared the value proposition when they were private, Silver Forty Seven, back in twenty twenty three. So we've been shareholders since they were private. You referenced the Yukon, and I think you stated the Red Mountain. The reason we actually participated in Silver Forty Seven in twenty twenty three, the project you're referring to, I believe you're referring to the Michelle project. I think you stated. Well, Red, Michelle yeah. is the, yeah, the one that didn't get the permit. The Yukon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and Red Mountain is south of Fairbanks. That obviously is in in Alaska, yes. not not the Yukon. Yeah, yeah. And the Michelle was what caught our attention, and the high grade silver coming out of there. <laughs> that's remarkable. So that's not even. Uh, it's, no, it was, it's world class. And here's what's going to happen: the Yukon government can stop them from getting the drill permit. But if they're going to do that, they're going to be on the hook. For liability somewhere between five million and fifty million dollars. So someday, one of three things is going to happen: uh, Silver Forty Seven is going to get five million, or Silver Forty Seven is going to get fifty million, or Silver Forty Seven is going to get a drill permit. And, and quite bluntly, I think the government in Yukon was just as stupid as the government in uh, in Australia. And if you notice, I can criticize Australia and the Yukon and Donald Trump, <laughs> but you can't. Else, <laughs> it's just Israel that you can't criticize. Yeah, and the CEO there is Gary Thompson. He's also the CEO of Brixton Metals. But value proposition, Silver Forty Seven. We're not partners with them, but been shareholders, been advocating uh, their merits here now over going on two years. They're a sponsor of uh, Three Two One Gold, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm thank thank you for saying that. Yeah, and he's a young guy, and I think it's very important for investors to realize there's a transition going on right now within the resource business. You know, if you went to a gold show five years ago, the average age was 93. Yeah, yeah. Well, and speaking of that... So if you add... No, hang on. If you add five years to 93, what do you get? Well, I would say almost death, but 98. (laughs) No, no, all of her death. (laughs) Okay. I I saw where you were going with that. (laughs) I stole your thunder. I'm sorry on that one, but I saw where you were going with that one. Uh, Well, speaking of... You didn't steal my thunder. (laughs) Your your readers, your listeners, they got it. All right. (laughs) Well, speaking of the the shift, let's talk about uh, an age... In leadership, let's talk about one of the next generation of wealth builders that we see on the horizon. That's Sean Kun Kun of Dolly Varden Silver. What can you share with us, sir? It's the wrong name. I would agree because they have now expanded in that regards. They're no longer just a silver company. But ple- well, here's what's funny. Okay, they're they're in the Yukon, and uh, they picked up a project nearby, and it happened to be a gold project. So. With fury, they've yes. got ex- yeah, they've got extraordinary drill results in silver. They've got the original Dolly Varden mine. 
okay, which was one of the most famous mines in the world back in the 1920s. Incredible story. Somebody wrote a book about it. But uh, they've also got a gold element that nobody thinks about because it's not Dolly Varden gold and silver, it's Dolly Varden silver. But if you look at their press releases, they've got some extraordinary drill results for gold. Yeah, they have that periodicity where you basically have a, a pearl of strings of, of deposits. They're about, I'd say, 1.8 kilometers apart, and they're looking to connect the dots even further within this little span there that they have. So the potential there, and you look at, here's what's intriguing as well, with uh, the leadership of Mr. Kun Kun, how he's been able to get the strategic investors. You have about a 7% float. So there's not a lot of shareholders there on the retail side. Right. Right. The stock you and did I were you really did you oh, sorry, what, sir? did yep. you really pull that off? Pull what off, sir? Paradicity. I sure did. <laughs> Nobody noticed. <laughs> Maurice, you're not trying to bullshit me, are you? No, sir. Did you make that up? No, sir. That a is that a word? It certainly is. Okay, spell it. Uh spelling of it I don't have in front of me. But paradisic. Oh, 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 okay. So you use words that you can't even spell. Well, I didn't say I was a, I'm a speller, but I'm aware of the word, yes. No, Mr. Kun Kun and I, we've referenced that in our interviews. I, I think I actually you made got, it up. Actually, I got it from him. Credits to him, because I was like, what is paradisic? So he was sharing. Okay, so he made it up. Okay. <laughs> then we'll scratch, I know him. Then we'll scratch paradicity. <laughs> okay. But look at that 7% float. You and I were covering them at forty-five cents. Stock recently went to a buck forty-one. Kind of cooled off and starting to get warm again. But the the probability of them going higher in the future, I like, and I'm sure you do as well. That's why uh, we're covering them right now. Well, uh, the amazing <clears throat> thing is, and I believe the hidden secret there is not the silver, which everybody knows about. I think it's the gold, and I I can't reference the grades. But when I saw the press release, I just went, holy cow, those are nice numbers. They certainly are. So if you're not aware of the ticker symbol, it is D as in Delta and V as in Victor. That's Dolly Varden Silver. Last one. Let's go to Fiji and visit Lion One Metals. What can you share with us? Lion One made a very important press release in the last week. And they have tapped into one of the higher grade uh, components. And it was very important for them to do that. They're in production. Uh, the, everything is swimming, except they weren't producing very much. They were really making the mill work and working the bugs out in the mill. And they finally got serious and they have tapped into one of the high grade areas. And the, the grade and quantity of gold is going to go up a lot. And that's exactly what's necessary. I think the stock's about 30 cents share now. And it's probably down 60 or 70%. And there's nothing wrong with the company. They just weren't producing gold. And now they're going to start producing gold in quantity. And... Uh, investors are going to realize that it's an alkaline gold system and they're in an area they're in a herd of alkaline elephants in the 5 to 20 million ounce area and i i believe they've got it there is a mine i think it's 35 or 45 kilometers away from them that has produced 11 million ounces and it's the same exact story so uh they 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 got whacked because they did some placements mm -hmm. at a bad time when nobody had any money and that hurt them however the stock is really cheap and it's a great stock and the ticker symbol is l i o and that's walter burkoff with lion one metals last question sir what did i forget to ask you forgot to ask me jeff, about jeff bezos girlfriend all right, well, we talked about the boat. We might as well go ahead and get the girlfriend out the way now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about his see, girlfriend? <laughs> if you see pictures of her, she looks like a hooker. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> no, I mean, go look at some pictures of her. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So what happens is, <clears throat> if you can be one of the richest people in the world, 
you get to have the biggest sailboat in the world, and you get to have a girlfriend who looks like a hooker. And I, I'm dying to get there someday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Mr. Moriarty, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you the absolute best, sir. Okay, it's been fun. Thank you, Maurice. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor. 